In this video, I'm going to show you how to factor a trinomial when your lead term, your a, is not 1, and also that that number cannot be factored out as a GCF. So notice how in this example down here that your uh, 3 and 1 are not divisible by 2. So I want to show you how to factor something like this. Now I have a couple tips here at the top, and it says when your a is not 1, uh, I use what's called split the middle method. And this method is very similar to my big X method that I've showed you in other videos, um, but with two small changes. So take a look. Multiply the coefficients of the first and the last terms, and that goes in the top of the big X. We've been doing that already. And the coefficient of the middle term goes at the bottom of the big X. Again, we've also been doing that. And then what we're going to look for is two numbers that multiply to give us the top number and add to give us the bottom number. Again, we have been doing that. And now the two numbers that uh, you find to become will become the two new terms that replace your middle term. So what happens is we split this 3X into two other numbers. And this turns out to be a four-term polynomial. And then we're going to do a factor by grouping, just like we would with four terms. So I'm going to show you four examples where we are going to um, do what is called the big X and then split the middle. So here in this polynomial, my A is equal to 2, the B is equal to 3, and my C is equal to 1. So for my big X, we take A times C at the top and B goes at the bottom. And 2 times 1 for my a times c is 2, and my b is 3. And the process remains the same. What two numbers multiply to make 2 and add to make one, uh, 3? And it would be 2 and 1. And now these two terms split your middle in half. So instead of a 3x, we're going to have a 2x and a 1x. And so now our polynomial will look like this. So it changes to four terms. So my 2x squared will now have, with that number, a 2x and a 1x. And it does not matter what order these go in. So if you had 1 and 2 here, that will not matter at all. And now what I'm going to do is factor by grouping. So in my first two terms, I'm going to take out my GCF, which is a 2 and an x. And then I'm left with 1x plus 1, because we took the whole term out. And in the next two terms, my GCF here is just 1, and I'm left with an x plus 1. Now when these two match exactly, which they do, this is one of your factor pairs, and your GCFs pull together to make your other factor pair. And this is how you factor when your a is not 1. We're going to try this a few more times. I have uh, four, uh, th four examples total. I've done one. And then I'm actually going to show you one where we take a couple of GCF out as well. So again, when you have an a that's not 1, we're still going to do big X. Here, my a is equal to 2, my b is equal to 5, and my c is equal to 2. So with my big X method, our a times c goes at the top and the b goes at the bottom. So 2 times 2 is 4, and the 5 goes at the bottom. And I want two numbers that multiply to make 4 and add to make 5. So it's multiply to make the top, plus there's that multiply dot to remind you, and add to make the bottom. Well, 4 and 1 multiplies to make 4 and adds to make 5. And these two terms are going to split our middle term into a 4. Now this time, look, there's a y and a 1y. Okay, so now we're going to change the polynomial to four terms. So now instead I'm going to have 2y squared plus a 4y plus 1y plus 2. And again, it does not matter what order you put those two terms in. You will get the same answer, I promise. And now we're going to factor by grouping. Um, and if you don't know what grouping is, check out my previous videos on grouping. We'll pull out the GCF of these two terms. So 2 and 4 are both divisible by 2, and both of them can take out a y. If I divide by 2 and a y, I'm left with 1y. If I divide by 2, I'm left with 2. Now in these two terms, there's nothing in common, so my GCF will just be a 1. 
because there's nothing in common with a y and a two. Now when these match exactly, which they do, we factored it correctly, or at least we know it factors. And then your GCFs come together, come together and make your other factor pair. Okay, let's try a couple more. So my A here is three, B is negative one, and C is negative four. Here's our big X. A times C goes at the top, and those two numbers we wanna find that multiply. And then our B goes at the bottom, and that those numbers we wanna to get to add. Three times negative four is negative 12. My B is negative one. So what numbers multiply to make negative 12 and add to make negative one? That's gonna be negative four and a positive three. So our middle term gets split into a negative four x and a positive three x. So now we're gonna change the polynomial to four terms. So instead of three terms, this is how I get those two terms. So how did I get the, the four and the three? How did I know to use those two? It's because of this big X method. So my first term was a three x squared my two new middle terms are negative 4x plus 3x. Now again, the order of which you put these will not matter. And then minus 4. Okay, now we're going to factor by grouping. So the first two terms, what's in common here is the letter x. And if I take out an x, I have a 3x and a minus 4. And these two terms have nothing together, so I'm going to pull out a 1. And I'm left with a 3x minus 4. Luckily, these match identically. So that's going to be one of my factors. And my GCFs that we pulled out come together to make your other factor pair. All right, here's one more example. With my A equals 5, B is negative 3, and C is negative 2, here is our big X method. So they're going to multiply to make A times C or five times negative two, which is negative 10, they're gonna add to make the B, which is negative three. All right, multiply to make negative 10, add to make negative three. How about negative five and a positive two? Those will multiply to make negative 10 and add to make negative three. So our middle term will be split into a negative five. Notice there's a Y here this time, a negative five Y and a two Y, so change a polynomial to four terms. So now we're gonna have, my front term is gonna stay the same, 5y squared. My two middle terms replace my other middle terms, so that's why it's called split the middle. And then last term is minus two. So the first and last don't, don't change, but we are splitting the middle to two new terms. So we have four terms, and now we're gonna do grouping. Now in grouping, you group the first two terms together and you pull out what's called the GCF. So a five and a Y are in common here. If I take out a five and a Y, I'm left with one Y. If I take out the five Y, I'm left with one. And now in these two terms, I notice they are both divisible by a GCF of two. And I'm left with a Y then minus one because two divided by two is one Y. Uh, two divided by two is one. When these match, that is one of your factors, and then the GCFs pull together to make your other factor. So if you know GCF, or factoring by, uh, yeah, if you know your GCFs and grouping, then you can do your A is not one. Now, I wanna show you two, I know this video is long, but I only have two left, so I'd rather just make one video than two for two uh, problems. These two examples have a GCF first, so always check from the beginning to see if you can find A equals, or an, when A is not one, a GCF right away. And I notice that in these three terms, they are all divisible by, so the GCF for all, they are all divisible by four. So I'm gonna take out that four first, and I'm left with an X squared minus, oh wait, they're not divisible by four. 14 is not divisible by four. Four, how about two? Let's try that again. It's good that you can see I, I make mistakes too. I'm not perfect. Okay, so let's do this again and put a two out front. So if they are all divisible by two, that means I need a two X squared 
and a 7x and a positive 3, which makes sense because I was thinking, how can that a not be 1 when I said a is not 1? All right. All right. Now, ignore the GCF out in the front for just a little bit. Our big X is going to come from the polynomial here where a is 2, b is negative 7, and c is 3. a times c goes at the top, so 2 times 3 is 6. b goes at the bottom, which is negative 7. What two numbers multiply to make positive 6 and add to make negative 7? That's going to be a negative 6 and a negative 1. And so our middle term splits into, instead, negative 6x and minus 1x. So we're going to change our poly to four terms. So we're going to have 2x squared minus 6x minus 1x and plus 3. Again, the order of which you put those will not matter. And now we're going to do grouping. I notice that here 2x can come out and then I'm left with x minus 3. Now to make this look the same, I notice these terms are opposite, so I'm going to pull out here a negative 1. And then our x will be positive in here, and then this number will be negative 3. So because these match, that's one of our factors. Our GCFs come together to make the other one. And don't forget about that GCF that you pulled out originally. So don't forget that in your answer. All right, we have one more left. GCF for all three terms here would be the number three. And so let's divide all terms by that number three. So nine divided by three is three x squared. 33 divided by three would be 11 x for the middle and 30 divided by 3 would be 10. Now let's do our big X with this triple that remains. A is 3, B is negative 11, C is 10. So A times C would be 30, B is negative 11. And what two numbers multiply to make 30 and add to make negative 11? This is going to be negative 5 and negative 6. So our middle is going to split here to those two uh, numbers with the x term. So here my polynomial will be 3x squared minus 5x minus 6x plus 10. And again, the order of what you write those won't matter at all, and now we're going to factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, what they both have in common is the letter x, so we'll pull that out, and then I'm left with a 3x and minus 5. And in the next two terms, I notice that the signs are opposite of what I want. This one is a negative, but I need a positive. This one's positive, but I need a negative. So I'm going to take out a negative and a 2 so that it will make my front term a positive 3x and my second term negative 5 so that these will match for the grouping. So one of my factors is 3x minus 5. The other factor is an x minus 2. And just don't forget about that GCF of the 3 that we pulled out originally. And that is how you factor a trinomial.